we can't seem to escape the noise of VAR. Obviously, you guys experienced it last Saturday, then the Newcastle Arsenal, and obviously Monday night football with Chelsea and Spurs. For you, as a manager in the Premier League, is it working? Are we implementing it correctly? I think if if the question is, is it get are we getting more correct decisions? I'd say yeah. So in that respect, it's working. Um, the problem is because we're looking at more and more things, we're getting more and more arguments about the subjective decisions. Do you know what I mean? Which will always be down to what one one man's opinion or the referee or the VAR referee. So I think that's where we seem to be talking about it a lot more. I think it's an interest to, because the fans are talking about it. Uh, the media then um, ask more questions about it and we constantly then get asked about it. Do you know what I mean? But in terms of, I think managers have always complained if you think a decision's wrong or tried to highlight it. So I don't think that's changed. I think we're just discussing more and more decisions, which I don't like. Um, and also probably another thing I'm not a fan of is when it takes the uh, the emotion out, out of the game because you are conscious of how many checks it's, there's going to be before a goal's given. So... Yeah, it's got its pluses, which are more correct decisions, and its minuses are, are those things I've just said there. As you said, you experienced all ends of the spectrum last Saturday at Bramall Lane with the victory. The Premier League's independent key, key match incident review panel, mouthful to say that, they voted unanimously, this is what's been reported, that the penalty shouldn't have been awarded. What's what's your thoughts on that? Obviously, the goal stand, they can't take three points on you, but yeah, delighted. Saying, <laughs> in isolation, reviewing that, that the referee and his VAR team made the wrong decision to yeah. give you guys a penalty. Yeah, delighted. But but it's always subjective, that's what I mean. So we, I think, with VAR, I think we've probably slightly changed our referees referee the game to what they did before VAR. That's the point. Um, because there is that thing that's going to be checked. But while ever we're not overturning things unless it's clear and obvious, it's going to go with the referee majority of the time. So, yeah, referees are the ones who should make the decision they see correct. Um, and then it's more difficult to overturn we accept that now last one from me obviously we have got a football game to talk about Brighton away on Sunday Roberto De Zerbi described last night's win in Ajax as the finest mm. in the club's history what have you made of their season so far and obviously taking yeah the well they're, listen they're a good side you can see everything they've done on and off the pitch over a number of years now has gotten to this point where yeah they're competing in Europe now I thought they were excellent last night um, so yeah, we know it's going to be a tough tough game um, yeah, but we're looking forward to it. Like I say, I think they're a, a team who uh, have done really good things on and off the pitch, but over a number and number of years and, and grown things. I think the owner takes a lot of credit for that. The people he's put in place, the manager who's been there. I know Dan Ashworth was there as, as part of that at, at the beginning as well. And they seem to have got a lot of uh, decisions right, putting people in key positions within the club. Um, and obviously that investment then, they've been able to grow things on and off the pitch. and. Yeah, it's gotten to uh, that night, what Berto said about being the biggest in the club's history so far, which, yeah, it's difficult to argue against, you know, if you watched the game last night. Thank you. Just just one, if I may, before we get on to other things about, uh, about the VAR scenario. You mentioned in, as part of your answer that one of the, the, the negatives to VAR right now is that it kills the moment and certainly hinders the goal celebration. Do you get the sense that the tide of public opinion, because of that, is waning about VAR? Because that's what we all want to yeah, see. I Your don't team know. score one more yeah, than I, else. I honestly don't know. It's my concern before. Um, but in all honesty, when you're in it and you're living it, I'm not considering anything like that. I just want the goal to go our way, whichever way that is. Um, <clears throat> and you, you, yeah, I'm not really listening to, to outside noises about it, whether it's punditry fans, I'm, I'm not. I'm bothered about um, us and our performance, but that's certainly always been a, something I was worried about. I go back to, I think I've said it in this before, that Champions League uh, game with, it was City and, City and Spurs, wasn't it, when they disallowed either way, and I'm watching, I'm watching the celebrations of the managers, and then it cut short, I thought, it's dangerous celebrating now. Just, and that was the first time uh, really, I think in such a big occasion, big game, and uh, yeah. So I think you have to be uh, wary, and that isn't fun. That's not what you go and watch a game for if you're a fan, um, and it certainly makes you hold things in if you're on the sidelines as well. Um, injuries or an update, <coughs> Rian? How is he today? So Rian, yeah, Rian's had a, a scan on his on the back of his knee, his hamstring just at the bottom, so he's upset that slightly. So it's not his 
original injury. So yeah, we we know we're going to be without him this weekend. Um, and like I said, we weren't going to take any risks with him when he when he did that. So yeah, um, to be expected, I think. Well, he's going to get niggles now. He's come back playing. However, it doesn't mean that we're any less frustrated us and Ryan, But we know how tough he is as a lad, and he'll be fine. It's a short-term thing, then, is it? I mean, I appreciate the international break follows yeah, this game. Yeah, yeah. So we'll know much more after that how we respond in these first couple of weeks. Um, <coughs> we were talking this time last week, weren't we, about the possibility that McBurney and Akbed Hodzic might be available? Yeah, have they progress potentially, potentially. So we're both out today. Uh, and L did most of the session with us, but not all of it. Um, so yeah, touch and go. But again, we won't take risks if they're not. Uh, if there's any doubt in my mind that playing them, even if it's for 15, 20 minutes, uh, could be an issue, then we won't. Good news, though, on the injury front for the first time in a while. It's usually been who's who's not available yeah, for the last yeah, six weeks. Yeah, so bits coming back, touch wood, and, we, yeah. and then it'll be fingers crossed again in the international break that everyone comes back all right. But listen, yeah, you, you tend to have that during the season, peaks and troughs of injuries. and um, Yeah, it, it will be better and we will... Uh, I'll certainly enjoy it more when we've got all the senior boys back on the pitch, on the training pitch, and we, we're working towards the games with big numbers and yeah, decisions for me to make, but it's, it's much better. Is, uh, are there any other issues, selection issues for this weekend? In terms of? Availability, injury, no, something we don't no, know about? No, no, oh, This is where I have to think some. Yeah, so re- obviously Rian, uh, and now Ollie Mack. Low is back and played uh, trained again this week, which is good. So yeah, no nothing other than that. Um, it's been reported this week that the club are in talks with McBurney and Fodringham about their potentially new deals and trying to tie them down. Uh, are those players sort of receptive and sort of up for negotiations? Yeah, they are. That's the reason that they negotiate. But that's been, we've been in that position for a long time. But yeah, so I, I'm not involved in that. I've, um, I leave that to to the club now and um, and the lads' representatives. So, is it as a, is it just those two? Because there's obviously quite a few whose futures are yeah. under question. No, there's some more all the way down to the young players. Um, it's sensible to do it. It's sensible to do it. And if, if you if you can't get anything sorted and agreed, you need to have tried your best. So I think that's that's the intention of, of the club to. Um, now we know where we are, what we're doing. Um, we've corrected a few issues, obviously, off the pitch. So now it's a case of can we um, get a bit l- more long-term thinking? And of course, when a tie plays down, we want. But also, from my point of view, if you're trying to build things, you want to know what players are going to be here, um, and then what you're going to need next window. Um, injuries sort of might dictate on this <coughs> as to regards who plays on Saturday, but. McAtee playing as he did in the role that he did the other day. Um, how much did that sort of th- make you think? Well, long in the in the short term, sort of repeating that because he did ever so well, didn't he? Yeah, he's he's been like that in yeah. the while he's been back. We've seen big moments from him. I thought, yeah, second half he was he was as good as he's been <laughs> here because he was more effective as well. Things were coming off the end of it. Yeah, so I expect that from him. He, you know, and the challenges for him to deliver that. Every time he's on the pitch, uh, I'm a realist, and I know he might not be able to deliver that every time. But that has to be the intention, if not even better, you know, and have more end product and be a real threat all the time. But yeah, I certainly liked how he played. Whether he plays that role or not, obviously Brighton are a different team and set up different. So um, whilst there were lots of good performances in the in the game the other day, um, and we ha- and, and I'm pleased about that we we will have to change things slightly for for Brighton I realise it's perhaps easy to ask this question today because he he did ever so well last week but do you kind of see similarities in James in this season as perhaps we saw last because you know the Luton game sort of was he mentioned it several times but boy did he progress from there difficult start to the Mm. year but is he sort of finding his feet as it were at Premier League level yeah and and yeah and better we, we played him in a deeper role which uh, I don't necessarily think that's his better position for us and where we are uh, in the league and what we expect of of that position but he's he's had to do that whether it was Spurs games like that and and performed well and really worked hard but I think 
I've been open enough about it. I think he's more effective when we get him on the ball the other side of the opposition's midfield, and that has to be our intention. We, we, whatever we play him, it's can we get him on the ball in that position? And then there's also a big expectation on him to perform his role without the ball, as he did the other day. Some of his, I'd argue that about 50% of his best moments came from how hard he worked without the ball as well. So that's a good thing. <clears throat> how how important is it that? Basically, the lads recreate the energy and intensity that they showed against Wolverhampton Wanderers this weekend. Yeah, uh, yeah, we know that. We, uh, I think, the quality increased in the second half as well, though, which was important for us. We need we need both. We've had strong performances without the ball, um, but then maybe not being as confident or as. Uh, relaxed and composed on it as we needed to be to then control the game in that aspect. And we've also had games where we've had real good moments and big long spells and the goal's taking the game away from us, things like that. So, yeah, but the intention is to have that same um, organisation and, and aggression when we've not got the ball to, to be difficult for Brighton to play against and also with the, with the hope and expectation that when we get it, we look after it as well as we did in the second half to progress and create problems. Every club goes about their business differently. So it's perhaps a little bit daft to say, are Brighton a model for a lot of teams in how they want to go about it? But they are perhaps a club that, if you have all the processes in the right place, things can work and work quite quickly, can't they? For no, you? This is, yeah, but this is not quick. This has been a hell of a long time coming back when they were bottom of the bottom of the championship. And you guys see the top end of the pit and what they've spent on the stadium, the training ground, their academy, the women's team, the under 21s, every position that they've spent fortunes and fortunes and fortunes. So they deserve to be where they are now, and people talking well of them because they've made, uh, along with that money and and that commitment, and now they've been willing to invest it to grow things. They've also made a hell of a lot of good decisions as well, and there'll be quite a lot as well that haven't been so good. But when you're winning on the pitch, you can hide those decisions, can't you? So, yeah, there's everyone would want to follow what they're doing. There's a big thing in how they recruit as well with with the owners' uh, stats and things like that, which is their way of going about it, which is to the outsiders proved really successful. So yeah, there's a lot of things that they do really, really well. So. Hi, Paul. Um, obviously, a win has changed the the confidence of the players, but being around them this week as the manager, how do you read the room? Do you sense there's a, a change is coming? Yeah, but we've we've had a lot of good weeks in the past. But you need uh, you, you get confidence from results, you know, performances to a certain degree. But even when performance has been going well, if we've had some cruel moments right at the end, which no matter when you're still focusing on what's maybe gone well, the belief comes from seeing the game out and getting over the line. That's why that the, the penalty, yeah, makes doesn't make me feel bad that someone said it's not a penalty, not at all. Uh, there are moments that you need to go for you in a league like this, not against us as we've had in, in the final few minutes of a lot of games. So, yeah, the results are important to help build what, what you try and build. And is there a danger that Brighton come here with a, with a for, for them at least, that they come here with a bit of a, or that they come here, you go there and you face them and they're suffering a bit of a hangover from Europe. It does happen. It does happen and, and we'd take that course, would, but we're not preparing for that. And, and I think... Uh, it's highlighted so much now um, about the possible difficulties of managing a European campaign with with a, a league campaign that the teams in and around there will all have their own strategies for trying to to fight against that um, and Brighton will be no different so yeah we're preparing for the best version of Brighton you know the one which I saw last night when I thought they were excellent